TURP is one of the most common procedures done for elderly patients suffering from bladder outlet obstruction secondary to BPH. And we all know once in a while these patients do have development of urethral stricture but the most important dreaded complication of this procedure is an external sphincter injury. Here in this case we are demonstrating a patient who presented to us with both external sphincter injury and also an associated bulbar urethral stricture. A 62 year old male presented to us with decreased urinary stream for many months. He also gives history of continuous urinary incontinence. In the past history, he gives history of some endoscopic procedure done. What the patient says that this procedure was done for a urethral stricture somewhere in 2012. After that, he used to have multiple urethral dilatations as well. But he never gave any history of TURP done for prostate. When he presented to us, we did an urethral calibration which showed that there was obstruction at somewhere around 15 centimeters from the meatus and even a 6 French infant feeding tube was not going into the bladder. This is the retrograde urethrogram of the patient where you can see somewhere around 16 centimeters from the meatus you can see a slight narrowing of the bulbar urethra which corresponding to the mid part of the bulbar urethra. Since the picture is in the AP view, uh, that's why the narrowed area is not clearly seen. However, if you had taken an oblique view, the stricture location could have been better visualized. Of course, since the calibration has shown that there is obstruction, the patient is taken up for examination under anesthesia and then subsequently OU can be done according to the findings seen intraoperatively. On urethroscopy, you can see the distal part of the anterior urethra is fine and at the mid bulbar area there is an complete obstruction. But initially we didn't find any opening there but on careful examination you can see a small opening seen in the floor. So this small opening which is slightly seen distal to the level of complete obstruction when once we passed the guide wire it went inside easily. See the opening is actually seen at the floor. So then the optical internal urethrotomy was started. You can see we started cutting at the level of 12 o'clock position. Slowly the narrowed area is getting opened up and of course the stricture is of a very short segment somewhere around 5 millimeters in length and when once we opened it you can see I am just reaching up to the roof of the urethral lumen. And after this is opened, then I subsequently started entering inside. This is the last cut. Now you can see I am trying to enter inside. Now then the after entering inside, because the patient had continuous urinary incontinence, you can see the sphincter area here. This is very important for the residents to learn that there is no cooptation of the bulbomembranous junction. It is wide open. Also. The prostatic urethra, you can see the veru is distorted, there is scarring and this is the bladder neck and when once I enter inside, you can see lot of severe trabeculations were seen in the bladder and also divertulations are also seen. See that's the bladder neck. I'm just looking for the ureteric orifices now, that's the right ureteric orifice and this is the left ureteric orifice. You can see the diverticulae also. Now when I am coming back again, you see the prostate fossa with this card suggestive of previous TURP probably. See the sphincter zone, it is widely open. This is the reason for his continuous incontinence. This is how a sphincter injury looks. Now this is the area where I have done the OIU. So the learning points based on this case are that external sphincter injury during TURP is one of the most dreaded complication which is associated with significant morbidity to the patient. And any patient who is coming to you following TURP with persistent incontinence, always we should evaluate for 
external sphincter injury so during evaluation the best investigation is doing a scopy for them like in this case you can clearly see on scopy that the external sphincter is not co-opting at all there are no mucosal folds which are seen at the level of the bulbomembrane junction the opening at the level of the bulbomembrane junction will look wide and fixed then another interesting thing is whenever you are doing erythroscopy for patients who had urethral stricture sometimes the opening is not seen immediately so always be vigilant to look for the small opening which might be located in the floor like in the given case or it might be in the roof or in the lateral wall of the urethral lumen so in such a case always pass a guide wire when once you are sure that the guide wire coiled in the bladder then you start opening the stricture segment thank you